With everything that we have seen so far together, I'm sure you'll start writing some pretty interesting applications. And maybe you're ready to share your creations and distribute them for free or even to charge money. That's why Google has created Android Market. Before submitting your application, there's a number of steps, actually 10 steps. And that's what we're going to see today. Number one, testing. And I should probably have added one, two or three exclamation marks here. Yes, you've tested your application in the emulator and it's looking great. But actually, there's nothing like testing with the real Android phone. And actually, with as many actual Android phone as you can. The very last thing you want is to have thousands of unhappy users unhappy because you didn't test well enough on the real thing. The emulator is a very good tool, but it is a it's a little bit different than the real telephone. First, the screen resolution. Usually 320 by 480, which is a half VGA. But in real life, your application will run on a variety of screen size and resolution. You want to make sure your application will look good on all the devices. Second difference, the screen orientation. Most devices today support screen orientation and you will also want to make sure your application will look good in the portrait mode. Next, the CPU, the network, the memory. Your emulator is using your CPU, the CPU of your machine, and the network of your machine. Now, will your application will perform as well on a smaller CPU with a 3G or even a GSM connection where latency can be very different? You need to figure that out. And last, the touch screen. In the emulator, the touch screen is simulated with the mouse. But on a real phone, a sensitive touch screen can be very different. And you might realize here that there is something wrong with your design. Number two, setting up an icon. You're going to create and attach an icon to your application. It's going to be a PNG file, 64 bit by 64 bit. You will upload it in the resource drawable directories of your application and then you will go in your android manifest.xml file in the editor in application here you're going to browse and select your new icon or you're going to go in android manifest.xml directly and edit uh, the pointer to this icon just here Now number three, adding a license. This EULA, this end user license agreement. I'm sure as a computer user and as a developer you are very familiar with that and you very often click on the agree slash accept button. Even if it's not mandatory for publishing your application, I will strongly advise that you have one. Especially if you sell your application, this is going to be the contract between you, the developer, and your customers. Next, you're going to clean up your code. You don't want to leave your debugging information, so turn off the debugging, turn off the verbose logs you may have in your application. Logs are for you, the developer, not for the user. They consume precious resources, space, and CPU cycle. You will also remove anything that is not needed anymore in your application. For example, for testing your application, maybe you have created fake test data in the database. Remove that. Take a final look at the code. You should be proud of it. Remember, you are going to release something. This means you are going to maintain the code. If there are some bugs, you will be the one fixing them. If your application is successful, well, users will ask you for more features and you will be the one implementing them. So make sure your code is readable and consistent. Next, you're going to version your application. What does it mean? You will need a version and you will need a version name. You're going to set that up in the manifest file. Google Market only care about the version code. That's the version number. So you will need to increase it every time you release a new version of your application. 
The version name is really yours. You do whatever you want with it. Next, we're going to create a certificate, if you don't have one already, of course. But first, let me tell you a secret. You know all the application we created so far and run? They were already signed with a certificate, and I never told you that. Well, actually, the truth is, to install an application, even a test application, it needs to be signed. And it was signed with what is called a debug signature. And of course, you cannot use this debug signature on Google Market, so we will we'll still need to sign our application with our own certificate. For that, we're going to use tools that are part of the SDK, so they should be already installed on your computer. And here, you have basically two choices. Number one, you want to have one certificate per application. It's kind of an hassle, but if you want to, that's fine. And number two, that I would recommend, of course, you have one certificate and you use this certificate to sign all your applications. That's what I recommend because it really simplifies upgrades, it facilitates modularity and the communication and code sharing between your applications. Google will ask you to provide certificates that are valid for at least 25 years. So let's uh, create this certificate. This certificate is composed of two keys one that is public and one that is private. The one that is private, well, keep it private. Do not share it at all. It's your key, the one that you're going to use to sign your applications. And the public key will be embedded in your application. And it will be checked at install time. Install time on the device, not runtime, just install time. So let's uh, use a tool called KeyTool to create a certificate. So I will go in the directory Android app. Right now it's uh, empty. So I will do KeyTool key-keygen minus V for verbos. And I will add this key in a safe, uh, in other words, in a key store. That I will name com.voxisland. I will give a name to this key, so an alias, and I will call it simply uh, JKey. I will uh, mention that I want uh, the algorithm to be RSA, and I want this certificate to be valid for so at least 25 years, so let's say 10,000 days. And 10,000 days is uh, something like 27 years, so it's going to be OK. Now I need to enter a password for my vault, for my key store. I need to re-enter it. And then the system is asking me a couple of questions. First name, last name. Uh, J. The name of your organizational uh, unit. Uh, Vox Island Dev. The name of your organization, Box Island. What is the name of the city? Montreal. Uh, Quebec. The two letter country code for this unit. Uh, and uh, this is a sum up of the information I gave. It's OK. Now I'm asked if I want to provide a key password. The first password I was asked was a key store password. So I don't want to provide any password. And it says here that uh, the key have been created in com.voxisland. Next, two steps that we'll do in one shot. We'll export, which means here we'll recompile our application for release and then we're going to sign it. So let's say that you remember this simple list application, the demo we built like in a couple of chapters ago. Let's say we want to deploy that. We will just right click on the project. 
will go down, down and down. And I know you may not see that on your screen. You have Android Tools and in Android Tools you have Export Unsigned Application Package. So let's do that. Uh, let's export that in the folder I created which is Android Apps and let's name the application SimpleList.apk so that's okay, a signed package uh, sorry, an unsigned package of the application was saved let's check now so I'm here and I see actually SimpleList.apk wonderful now what we're going to do is simply sign the application with another tool that is also part of the SDK that is JAR Signer. JAR Signer, I will also use the verbose mode and I will say that the key is in the key store com.vox island I will want to sign sample list dot apk and I will provide my key we see which is uh, J key. I enter the price phrase for the key store and apparently everything went okay. Now and last I will use another tool, a last one, it's not mandatory but I will I will recommend it. You use zip align. So zip align minus V for verbose four mean four byte alignment uh, we don't need to know exactly what it is, don't use any other value here. For you provide simple list dot apk and then you provide another name simple list two dot apk. What it's doing, it's a zip. It's just making sure that you are not losing any space here, so it's compressing what's inside your application. And here it was successful. This being done retest retest everything you want to make sure everything went smoothly once again you don't want to have thousands of unhappy users unhappy because something wrong happened in the process and they will end up trying to install a broken application and then and only then publish your application you will go to market.android.com and create an android developer account which is going to cost you 25 dollars then you'll go to markets.android.com slash publish. You will upload your application and provide some information like the application title, its description, its type. At this time there are only two types, applications and games. You can provide promotional graphics, screenshots, a category for your application and contact information. You can also set a price if you want to sell it, but you can only do that if you're in a country where you can create a Google Merchant Checkout account. Those countries at this time are Australia, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, Netherlands, Spain, UK and USA of course. If you are not in those countries, you can still publish your application, but for free. So you're done, you've published your application. Actually, there's an 11th step missing here. Step number 11, be proud of you.